Okay, so in my last video, I said no more Commodores for a little while. Um, and I do have other videos uh, planned right now, but I, I couldn't resist. So I just got this from eBay. Um, it's a nice little setup, but uh, um, this is the uh, uh, 64C instead of the, the bread bins I'm used to working on. It's interesting. It came with a cover, but the cover really is from a C64, and they unstitched it basically in order to make it kind of kind of fit <laughs> but um yeah i'll have someone stitch this back and bring it back to what it's supposed to be um this cover obviously wasn't made for this so that being said um let's go ahead and plug this in it came in a nice box uh it came with the manuals I i'm real happy with the presentation it was very well wrapped very well packed um so kudos to the seller for that so let's see what we've got so let's go ahead and plug this puppy in you're looking at it for the first time like i am and uh let's get this power cord situation worked out here let's get the video cord plugged in all right let's get some power going here and let's take a look at the screen let's see what we got All right, let's turn this puppy on. Okay, so, so far so good. Um, no, actually not. Notice what's missing right off the bat? Cursor. Cursor is missing. So that usually points to uh, a CIA being bad. So let's run a a dyad cartridge test on here money says that the timers on the bottom will be off so let's see what happens here all right now the timers are fine but it hasn't gone through the whole test there we go look at that um one of the timers already off okay so we see timer one a b is bad timer two is fine so obviously we have a CIA problem um, and I don't hear sound. So looks like we probably have a, a SID issue as well. So, all right. A little bit of a work cut out for us in bringing this back to life, but nothing insurmountable. We got a nice screen and being that the cursor is missing, it should be relatively, I would hope, simple to fix but we'll see so in opening these guys up we don't have um phillips screws on the bottom we have these um i don't know what you call them torque hex screws whatever so let me get the right screwdriver here get rid of this phillips at the end of this let's get one of these things going on here all right a little stubborn here there we go All right, so in order to get to the chips, we gotta take out the keyboard and get the uh, shield off. Actually. This slides out from underneath these little tabs on the bottom. It's a nice clean system, I'll say that. Okay, so 
shield has these screws here that come off. got one two three should have four in the back you want to keep the back screw separated from the front screws because the back screws are, are uh, less in length than the front screws are they're shorter there's the shield and it gives us access to our chips here. Okay, so let's see if I can get the tester in there. U1 is usually the CIA chip that goes with uh, no cursor. So let's, let's see if we can test that chip out first. Let's get our tester going here. Okay, so first of all, let's see if we can, if this can slide in there. Okay, so let's see. circuit testing okay so testers telling us we have a bad CIA okay the no cursor goes with u1 so let's go ahead and see about socketing replacing u1 here so the interesting thing, I'm looking at this board right now underneath, and the interesting thing that I'm finding is that U1 here has, I believe, been unsoldered and soldered back in because there is a lot of flux around it. So obviously someone has tried to fix it at some point in the past. But let's, uh, let's do this first and foremost. I'm going to go ahead and take this out and socket it at least. Why someone would have taken this out put another one in without socketing it um, that's you know that's just amateurish so anytime you're going to unsolder chips put a socket in there <laughs> um, so let's go and take care of this real quick it already has flux thanks to whomever worked on this before but just in case we'll just throw a little bit more on here All right, let's get a socket in there. Okay, so got the chip socketed back. There was a couple of, of traces that had um, come out. I, one of them was actually bent like 90 degrees. So I'm thinking when they um, did a work on this before, they didn't solder this back in place very well. So we're gonna have to test some of these traces just to make sure there's continuity there. So in the meantime, before we do that, why don't we give this CIA chip here a quick test. I feel much more comfortable when I test these things loose than when they're inline because inline there's so many um, relationships that the chips have that um, that any one of those integrations could cause it to fail. So All right, so this failed. So that kind of makes me feel better knowing that that chip really is bad. And hopefully we don't have to replace the other one as well, but let's find a new CIA chip and plug that puppy in and let's see where that takes us. Okay, first things first, let's 
go ahead and test this, make sure that it's a good chip. Okay, so that's a good 6526 chip. Let's go ahead and drop that in there and see what we got. Okay, make sure all the pins are in. Go ahead and see if we made any headway here. Hopefully we see a cursor. All right. There we go. There you go. We got a cursor. And that's a big plus. So let's go ahead and put the Diag cartridge in now. See if that timer problem went away. You'll see it after the first RAM test here. Excellent. So you can see the um, chips now match up. They clock in. By the way, when we did this test the first time, I said, oh, there's a 15 second. The other one should have changed to 15 because this is the, um, the triggers that are hitting the timers. So um, the first one is CIA one, and that's the one we replaced. And that's how you knew it was back because it stayed at zero. Um, the second one is CIA two. So now you see timer A and B for one and timer A and B for two are all okay. Still no sound, that's the SID. So let's replace the SID and uh, and run this test one more time. Okay, so um, I'm going to be replacing this with an arm SID. The arm SID, I just can't, I'm a raving fan, I just can't say enough about it. It'll auto detect whether this is a 6581 or in this case an 8560 and configure itself. Even after it's configured, you can use a utility to go in and reconfigure it. So, um, I, and these also allow you to use the paddles, unlike the, um, the swim SID, you know. I think that's what it was called. Wind SID, swim SID, I don't remember. But anyways, one of the only, one of probably maybe only two chips that I know that are aftermarket that work with the paddles and all this other stuff. So close you're gonna to get to the original, I feel, as possible. So go ahead and pop that sucker out. We don't really need to test it because we already know it doesn't give any sound. And then we'll plug this guy in. And let's do the diag one more time. Let's just shut the, this off here. Okay, strong voice, voices, you know, which you would expect from a brand new SID. So I think that pretty much will wrap this up. You just got to put this back together again. So in the end, what did we have here? Beautiful keyboard. I mean, beautiful system. Very, very clean. Um, we replaced CIA one and we saw that um, CIA one had a problem registering any timing. And we replaced the SID because obviously we didn't have any sound. And what I think happened is they replaced the, C the CIA one and unfortunately they didn't socket it, which they should have. But anyways, 
but I think they wiped out a couple of traces and didn't get them replaced properly when they unsoldered it. So when they soldered that other chip, one, the chip was bad, but two, it wouldn't have worked anyways because the traces were all messed up. Fortunately, we desoldered enough and the, the pins, uh, the, the pad for the trace with, were still on the traces. So made sure that the socket went through those, uh, the holes in those little pads and um, laden it with a little bit more solder than we normally would have to make sure it flowed all the way through. And that was that. So we replaced that and the SID and now everything is back together nice and tidy. So we're going to, before we put this all back, we're going to take some alcohol to that flux that we have there. Make sure we clean this up. And then we will get this all screwed back together again. So stay tuned. Okay, back, back together again, and we'll just give it one more test, and, and I think we can call this one. Now I promise, I gotta promise, otherwise it's not gonna happen. The next video is going to be <laughs> um, something other than a Commodore, maybe one of the RCs. I love the keyboard keyboard is working great um, real nice action to it so I think we're set um, the cool thing about this is it came with uh, it came with the original styrofoam it came with the original plastic um, and the beauty of it all is that it also came with the original box and power supply and this is you know almost like a new system again and um, easy, easy repair. There you go. Another one for the books. I promise the next one will be a different video, but hope you enjoyed this one nonetheless and maybe you got something out of it. And like I always say, you only live once, live for today, enjoy it, live life to the fullest. Peace out.